Okay, so last time we heard about what I called the LC missile, or for brief, LCM, least common multiple, and that's how we eradicate fractions uh, from uh, an equation, is by using the LCM. So now we're going to talk about how we actually find the LCM. We'll go through a couple of examples. So we begin with this example, 1 over 2x and 1 over 3x, and we'd like to find the LCM, or the common denominator, for those two algebraic fractions. Uh, first, here's what we need to have with our LCM. Each denominator, remember, must divide into the LCM, and nothing smaller should work. Now, when you were dealing with uh, numerical fractions and finding common denominators and things like that, it actually didn't matter uh, too much if you didn't find the least common denominator. Uh, as long as you found something that was common for each of the denominators, it would eventually work. Now that would usually mean you'd have a little extra simplifying you'd have to do, but other than that, really no big deal. With algebraic fractions, uh, we need to make sure we do find the least. In fact, if we don't find the least common denominator, uh, we very likely could end up having for ourselves an equation that becomes too difficult for us to solve. See, because as, as you add extra variable terms that you don't need to the LCM, uh, the equation that you end up solving, it actually increases the degree of that equation, makes it more complicated. Okay, so uh, very careful there. You have to be very careful. Okay. Uh, so, what we do is we start to examine our denominators and ask ourselves, okay, think back to multiplying by fractions. What would I have to have in order to cancel out a 2x? What would I have to have in the numerator if I wanted to divide out, cancel out a 2x? We say to ourselves, well, I'd have to have uh, a 2 and an x. So, we include that in our LCM. We have to have that. We move to the second fraction, which is 3x. We say, what would I need to cancel out the 3x? Well, I'd have to have a 3 and an x. I'd have to have that exact thing. But if we look at our LCM, we already have the x accounted for. So I can cancel out the x. If I multiplied 3x, that 1 over 3x by 2x, the x's would cancel out. I still have to get rid of the 3, so I need to account for a 3. So I include that in my LCM. And in this case, we have 2x times 3 we go ahead and multiply and write that as 6x. Okay, so let's move on to example 2. Uh, example 2, we have the fractions 3x over x minus 5 and 4 over x plus 2. Again, we want to find our LCM. So we begin by examining the each of the denominators. So the first one is an x minus 5. To get rid of an x minus 5, we would have to have that actual factor, x minus 5, uh, in our numerator. So we go ahead and, inc and include that in our LCM. Then we go to our second denominator, x plus 2. Now our LCM already consists of x minus 5, but that x minus 5 is not going to do anything about canceling an x plus 2 factor, so we actually need to also include x plus 2 as a factor. And so it turns out our LCM here is actually just the two denominators together. Okay, but don't fall into the trap of just always assuming that's the case, as our next example shows. So here we actually have three fractions. Now, since you want to make sure that you don't include something extra, uh, it's very important if your denominators are not factored to begin with, that you begin by factoring them. Now, rather than rewriting them, Usually what I do is, like I've done here, is I just kind of draw a line through it and then write the factored result underneath. So x squared minus 4 is a difference of squares, so I can write that as x plus 2 times x minus 2. Okay, And then, I, just like I did before, I now go through and start to examine each of those uh, denominators. Now, in order for me to cancel out an x plus 2, I'm going to have to have an actual x plus 2. Likewise, for me to cancel out an x minus 2, I'm going to have to have an x minus 2. Okay. 
I'm going to have to have an x minus 2. So, so far I have x plus 2 and x minus 2 is my common denominator. I then continue to my next denominator, x plus 5. Well, neither of those things will cause an x plus 5 to cancel. So I include x plus 5 in my common denominator as well. And then we come finally to our last denominator, x minus 2. <clears throat> and when we examine that with what we already have, we say to ourselves, hey, wait a minute. We already have x minus 2 accounted for. Right? The common denominator I have written down right now will already take care of x minus 2. Right? So because we already have it, we're not going to include it uh, as part of our common denominator. And so actually we now have our common denominator. And this is why it's important to make sure you factor your denominators. If you had just taken your three denominators together, then you'd have actually had an extra x minus 2 that you didn't need to include. What that would lead to uh, when you're solving a fractional equation is if the original equation would have been a first degree, a linear equation, now it's going to be a second degree, a polynomial equation. If it would have been a polynomial equation, now it's going to be a third degree equation, and you may not even be able to solve that third degree equation. So it's really, really important uh, when we're solving these problems that we go through and uh, factor our denominators and then piece together our common denominator, taking only those pieces that we need. Okay, so in the upcoming videos, we're going to be using this idea of finding common denominators to actually solve uh, algebraic equations, algebraic fraction, equations with algebraic fractions.